Pray silence, please, for your weekly live Is It Fast? Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, people of all automotive faiths and backgrounds, welcome to Is It Fast Live, the weekly magazine show brought to you by the team behind Is It Fast Media, where we bring you the latest from the world of motorsport, cars, watches, and frankly, anything else that has tickled our fancy throughout the course of the last six to seven days. Those of you who are regular watchers and listeners to the show will know that I am not the only person called Stuart that hosts. To make life easy, we have another guy who's also called Stuart. Hello. That's purely how I got the job. There, there were far better applicants out there, people that actually know about this kind of stuff, but you know what? The, the name badge was already made up, sod it, yeah. It was very, very cheap from from a number of different perspectives, uh, but you will notice that he's also back in his normal seat. Uh, he he uh, he was on his travels for the last two weeks, but we've managed to lasso him back from that uh, rather lovely, if pompous, city of Edinburgh, and now he is back. Well, I'm speaking as a West Sacrilege. Coast man myself. Oh. You know, it, the the classic joke: if you see someone walking down the street in Edinburgh with a golf club. They're probably on the way to play golf. You see the same thing in Glasgow. They're not on the way to play golf. So that's uh, that's kind of where where the divide lies, I find. But Stu is back, and of course, so is our repertoire of interesting things that have happened in the car, automotive, motorsport, watches, and everything in between world. And I think it's only fair if we give you a slight heads up as to what is on the show. And I'm not just talking about Stu's naked face, as he has indeed shaved his face <laughs> quite a lot. But we will talk about why in the next five to ten Earth minutes, give or take. Depends how quickly we get through our segments. But our segments tonight do include the brand new Mercedes SL AMG was revealed earlier the last week-ish or so. Very, very exciting. You can drive around mm. in a posh manner with no roof. Uh, Rolls-Royce revealed their brand new black badge just in time for Halloween. Uh, we are talking, of course, because this is the 21st century, about a new electric vehicle that is on offer in the UK shortly. There's some motor racing going on at the weekend that I know we're all excited about. We talk about watches and we talk about more racing cars that should probably be illegal, but they're not. But I will tell you now, manufactured and distributed from the crazy folk of New Zealand. The same people that brought you bungee jumping and paragliding are now bringing you racing cars, which can only really fill your heart full of dread. They calm down with hobbits for a bit, but then like, they're, they're back up to their crazy levels, let's be fair. Yeah, they're just um, it's a long way away from everybody and they get bored easy, I think is mm. uh, is really where we are with that. But without further ado, uh, it is time to share our first titbit of the week. Uh, so there's nothing better. <laughs> well, I mean, there might be things better, but there's almost nothing better than driving around without a roof on your motor vehicle. And the only way to make that better is to do it in something with, frankly, an incredible engine. So Mercedes announced the new SL AMG. This is the seventh generation of the Mercedes SL Roadster. Uh, I can't believe there's been seven generations already, and they have all been prettier than the next. Uh, it does bring back the brand new fabric roof. Uh, it's got a two and two uh, layout, so two people in the front, two people in the back. Uh, and this incarnation does receive both four-wheel drive and four-wheel steering as standard, which in itself is quite interesting. Uh, for the fourth time since the uh, for the first time since the fourth generation SL, uh, the the new model will feature a triple layer fabric roof, which is pretty cool. Uh, it's claimed to weigh 21 kilograms less than the metal roof used by the previous generation. It's operated with a switch on the center console, so you don't have to do it yourself, which I think is quite handy. Uh, and it's got a heated glass rear screen. So Mercedes bringing the innovation as 
always uh, gets up and down in 15 seconds. And that means when the roof is down, you can listen to the V8 powered. Beautiful. Mm. Oh, I mean, yeah. Mercedes are the muscle car makers of Europe. Uh, so there's two options in the AG line. They're bringing back the SL55. Interesting fact, it's the first time an AMG model has used the 55 moniker since the G55 was retired in 2012. Uh, so you've got a V8 uh, that will get you 4 litres, 469 brake horsepower, 516 pound foot. And then you can order an SL63 if you wish, 577 brake horsepower. And that gets you 0 to 62 in 3.6 seconds. It's got the very nice interior, basically borrowed from the S Class massive mm. massive center console but here we have it a very exciting new motor vehicle from mercedes amg i'm a big fan of the sls in general i came and continue to come very close to purchasing them myself what do we think about this you know what i like it reboot of the iconic kind of sports car for it interestingly fewer than one percent of the cars sold by mercedes around the world uh, were sports cars in 2020 now that only represents sub eighteen thousand total sales of more than kind of two million so there's no great surprise to see that the sl has been given that bit of lease of life as you kind of alluded to a huge fan of the v8 engine it does look awesome I love the front grille. Gives a little bit of the classic uh, 5.0 Ford Mustang Vanilla Ice would sing about. Which <laughs> it is does. Awesome. Um, but there, there's kind of nothing special about it for me for the interior compared to the regular saloon models. Um, it's just funny, a, a very kind of another generic Mercedes interior. Um, lacks any of that kind of specialness, the wow factor. And Comparing that to, say, like a, an Austin Martin uh, DB11 uh, mm. or the Ferrari uh, Portofino, I just kind of feels a little lacking for me, also a little bit of laziness. Um, almost like well, the, the, the Jaguar JX, but it's kind of given us just a massive tablet in the middle. <laughs> um, okay. But I am. The, have you seen the speakers in the doors? For I have not seen the speakers in the doors. It almost looks like you're staring into the inside of a cheese grater. It's, <laughs> it, it's, it's Are they Merid nice. Is that a Meridian sound system? Oh, possibly. <laughs> um, but, uh, yeah, I, I do like it. I do want to be able to uh, see it in the flesh. Um, massively happy for the engine. Um, there will be a, a hybrid model to follow. Mm. Uh, but, yeah, Mercedes, can I give us a bit more on the inside? If you, if okay. You That's interesting because I think this is incredible. And I think it's an advancement over the last one. Can I just give you 10 out of 10 and some is it fast bonus points for that factoid about 1%, less than 1% oh, thank you. of Mercedes motors being sold are sports variants. That blows my mind because in my head, Mercedes are two things, sports cars and taxis. So, yeah. <laughs> like, for the fact that only, like, 1% of them are, uh, or less than 1% of them, as you say, are sporting variants, that that is quite confusing. Uh, well, quite surprising. Not confusing. I understand maths. I, I get the premise that, you know, this yeah. was the number sold. Um, yeah, interesting. But it's not it where you would see it. Yeah. No, not at all. It's interesting you put it in there with the Portofino and the DB11. I agree that these are cars where the roof comes off. And they're Grand Tourers, essentially, and they belong on the south coast of France, undoubtedly. Uh, other coasts are available. And they've got rip-roaring engines. So interesting that it's in that company. What I couldn't find, admittedly, I might not have looked very hard, is the price. Yes, neither could I. They must uh, be keeping this a little bit of a guided secret right now. Yeah. Guarded and no, yeah. no word, Stuart. Um, <laughs> I agree. I, I think the price is yet to be determined. I imagine this will be between 85 and 110,000 yeah. pounds. I was certainly sterling. thinking plus 80. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. Especially uh, maybe the SL55 is probably going to come in at 85 to 90. Um, and then if you go for the whole hog, SL63, which, by the way, I've driven SL. 
uh, 55s, actually, weirdly. Um, I think it was an SL55. And I've driven the even hotter version. This was, I mean, l- late 2000s. Um, and I would go for the 55. Just if anybody's... Uh, now, obviously, I can't speak for this model, but I would go for the 55 because anything else is too much power. You're never really realistically going to use it. You get the same noise. Uh, you save on your fuel. I know that's not the point of a car like this, but you save on your fuel. It's a little bit lighter, which makes it slightly more dynamic. So that's my professional motoring journalism top tip for the day is go for the slightly smaller power version but most people won't which is fair enough but there we have it the uh, mercedes sl amg the seventh generation highlights being fabric roof is back it's got a four liter v8 so get it while you can still get that kind of drivetrain and uh, uh, an internal combustion engine that is an actual combustion engine uh, and uh, it will go quickly but really it's for plodding around the french riviera or any riviera for that matter but tell us what you think what do you think of the sl amg seventh generation we would be rather keen to find out and mercedes think... if there's a problem you will solve it check out the hook while the dj revolves it there we go. <laughs> Very good. I enjoyed Thank that. <laughs> Who doesn't like good. a bit of vanilla ice? <laughs> yeah, well, this is it. Um, so Mercedes, fair enough. They make luxurious cars. Uh, quick question for you. Who else makes luxurious cars, G? Oh, off the top of my head, uh, Rolls-Royce. Oh, that is a very, very good guess. Oh. All in a one So last week, we shared the news that uh, Rolls-Royce had teased their latest black badge edition. Um and Black Bad Edition, they promised, and Black Badge Edition, they delivered. So last week, Rolls-Royce, just in time for Halloween, showed us the ghost Black Badge. Uh, I thought it was going to be the Phantom, but I don't know. I was wrong. Uh, so I want, Rolls- I, know, I want to stop the podcast here. I said it was going to be a ghost. You and did say that. Be, yeah, you, this is going to be brushed you, over right now. You did say that. <laughs> um, so for those of you that don't know, the and I'm going to guide right over that, the Black Badge mm. is Rolls-Royce's uh, basically kind of sports badge, like almost like their AMG division, I guess. Um, mm. And they've given the Black Badge treatment to the Ghost. And there's some interesting uh, conversations to be had. It's got 29 uh, brake horsepower more than the uh, of original standard version, if you like, of the Ghost. Uh, twin turbo 6.75 litre v12 engine has now got 592 brake horsepower savage uh mm. 664 pound foot uh, and all of it is available at just 1700 rpm which means you get a load of power way down which is still means it's relaxing to drive or be driven in uh, other dynamic tweaks uh, more voluminous air springs designed to reduce body roll under hard cornering, bespoke throttle mapping, revised tuning for the all-wheel drive and four-wheel drive steering systems, raising of the brake pedal's biting point, so slightly more dynamic, reducing its travel, good make. Uh, and it's one of the most popular variants, and I mean this as a black badge, of the entire Rolls-Royce range. of all Rolls Royces sold, that's hard to say, um, have been Black Badge models since they were introduced in 2016. Uh, Black Badge originally on the Wraith. Uh, They thought it was going to be 15%, but it's 40%, which is interesting. I guess if you've got a load of money and you're going to buy a Rolls Royce, if you need to spend what will be 325 grand for this, just in case you were wondering, um, then why not go for the Uber super duper powerful version where everything's a little bit darker a little bit more sporty you're more likely to drive your, drive yourself in a ghost than you ever are in a phantom for example so interesting uh so there we have it the latest model of black badge from ghost black badge ghost from rolls royce that frankly ain't none of us buying because it's the price of a house round here uh so there we have it what do we think of this uh, and him well, typically <laughs> and this guy yeah. <laughs> this guy's yeah. amazing it was Isn't he just he, he looks like someone out of buffy the vampire slayer <laughs> that's it exactly it's like an older version spike. of yeah spike i was gonna say angel but i knew that wasn't right oh well done no man. yeah i, I, was was a, I wasn't a big spike. buffy watcher when i was a kid so there you go i was a bit, um, I, was a, I was a big old buffy watcher i was i bet, bet you were mm-hmm. um 
Now, obviously, back on track. Um, <laughs> Rolls Royce has really built its reputation around producing the world's most comfortable, luxurious cars. It's not about to chuck that away, but it's also now about appealing to a new type of customer, the younger multimillionaires, which mm. feeds very nicely into the idea that the Black Badge Rangers are the big sellers. Um, now, for me, the, the variant here for the Black Badge doesn't stray far too far away from your standard ghost, if you can call it. Uh, a Rolls Royce standards. I know, right? Um, <laughs> but it's got these kind of like um, the carbon fiber barrel, um, 22 layers of carbon for this thing, um, bespoke um, 21 inch wheels. Uh, even uh, the uh, the back lights are about 152 LED illuminating. Uh, it looks really smart. Um, the interior from it, uh, there's an option for like a black and chrome uh, carbon look with uh, almost like um, caramel seats, which looks absolutely awesome for it. The one they're showing here seems to be a much lighter kind of sky blue, which doesn't do anything for me, but if you're spending this kind of money on a car, I'm sure you could get any color combo that your heart desires. Um, mm. If you support the Los Angeles Lakers, guess what? I'm sure they could do yellow and purple for you. Well, that's what Rolls Royce do. They would literally they will yeah. they will make any car you like, right? I mean, they say they're coach builders, so yeah. fair enough. Yeah. Um, last last thing for it again, it was on a different video, but have you seen the roof interior? Uh, they, they look like they've tried to appease uh, Professor Brian Cox or Rembrandt. They've always made it look like a starry night. Kind of you're quite system. you're quite new to Rolls Royce, aren't you? That is that is that is an optional extra. Oh, been available been available for the last little while, and you can uh, yeah, it is a star effect. I mean, I don't blame you because you haven't ordered a Rolls Royce recently, so I, you know. I've not. No, I checked my credit card the other day, uh, and that hadn't popped up. No, I've... yeah, yeah, but yeah. I, you can I also have them. You can you can even personalize that to. Uh, s- s- uh, what are they called? St- not star star systems. Solar. Yeah. Uh, so like you could have the star s- s- system for Sagittarius or Capricorn, or you can have your own. You know, if you got married or proposed to someone under the, you know, whatever of so whatever. You make up your own constellations to. Control. That's it. Constellation. Crikey, yeah. that was going to drive me mad. Uh, yes, exactly. Oh, and wow. it's I think is thing is if you're in the market for a Rolls Royce, you are going to go mental i don't care what you say if i'm specking a rolls royce it's going mad i'm gonna get it with kilmarnock football club interior bloody (laughs) blue and white and then i'm gonna have a squirrel in the top and then i'm gonna have a rugby themed etch along my dash just everything that i love and i don't that would be awesome instead of instead of the lady of elegance on the front you've just got a squirrel yeah (laughs) That, yeah, that'd I mean, be that's, brilliant. that's quite a for anybody watching or listening. That's quite oh, a yeah. niche thing, uh, you know. For for I don't know if anyone ever related to Kilmarnock at football clubs owned a Rolls Royce, probably. Um, but there you go. I mean, there you go, Killy. If you're watching, uh, uh, if ever it comes true, I will replace the spirit of ecstasy with a squirrel. Um, and I, do you know what? I'd be into that. Uh, so there we have it. Yes, the Rolls Royce Ghost Black Badge. Uh, they announced it just in time for Halloween. It is a very, very expensive toy, starting at three hundred and twenty-five grand. Uh, but tell us, would you purchase <laughs> one of these if you could? And if you did purchase a Rolls Royce Ghost, would you go for a conventional Ghost or would you go for the Black Badge, which is slightly more sporty and therefore ever so slightly more unbecoming for the Rolls Royce? connoisseur uh i don't think you can look bad in a rolls royce personally but no. i'm sure there are people out there that say that the black badge is ruining rolls royce eye everywhere um i don't think it is i think you're right for the young budding uh millionaire uh i <laughs> the, the music, i would the music go mogul out there Absolutely. yeah the, yeah i'd go for a black badge just because it's slightly sportier if i'm going to drive it myself i want something with a bit more reaction but um yeah. You I shouldn't think drive yourself in a, um, again, normal Rolls Royce, but no. that's what you get away with. Yeah, yeah, I would, and to be honest, not that anyone cares, but if I was to buy a Rolls Royce, and I I would buy one, um, it would be the Dawn. It would be the coupe version. Yeah. I just think 
it's the only one. I don't like the idea of being driven around. I don't like the idea of having a chauffeur. It feels weird to me. So a Dawn makes sense. It's still massive, but um, but you could drive it around yourself even and not was, look Even silly. if the driver was called like Alfred or Parker? Nah, I just wouldn't do it. No, yes, my lady. You, my lady. Parker, yes, my lady. That's yeah, a real Rolls Royce, by the way. Yeah, you'd probably get sick. They made that. We call you, you know, they ma- lady. Yeah, yeah, no, you get used to it. But you know, they um, they made Lady Penelope's Rolls Royce. The, I've seen the, it. the big pink one. Yeah, 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 yeah. So it blew my mind. Still blows my mind. God bless innovation and engineering everywhere. Um, so you could spend all your money on a Rolls Royce, or you could spend your money, particularly in November, doing something worthwhile. Please sit back, relax, and watch this short message. Yeah. Oh, it, dear. it is November, <laughs> therefore it is November. So that is why Stuart's face is completely and totally bald, other than the three or four days of uh, three or four days of growth on his top lip. Uh, but it is a very worthy cause. Uh, over a thousand pounds raised last year for the same cause. So congratulations! Thank uh, you very it's, much. It's something we should all do more of, and we'll talk about a little bit more. I will not be partaking. I will be donating, but I can't grow a tash, so I just don't bother. Uh, so uh, I know that's not the overall message, but uh, the links will be available everywhere to donate to Stu's cause. Uh, and please. Do. It is a very worthy charity. The guys at November do incredible work uh, and uh, loads of people look really silly, which is a nice side effect of helping people genuinely save lives. Uh, we won't go into detail, but there is a very good reason why we should all do more. Talk to your mates and check yourself uh, because it's very, very important. Uh, so Thanks. please, please do. Thank you very much. Uh, always important to, to talk to your buddies uh, as well, guys out there. Uh, as you said, three days in, I think the mustache is in research and development mode right now. <laughs> Hopefully I'll have something better to, to show the, the faithful viewers next week. Um, but yeah, my uh, wife came home the other day and practically didn't recognize me. So that was nice. Um, <laughs> biggest thrill she's had in years <laughs> exactly uh, uh, so there we go even, please. No, no, even even worse if you've got facial recognition on your phone i had to reset mine because <laughs> Did really? it didn't yeah because it didn't recognize me when i took my beard off so i had to reset it that's impressive so, so, that is so imp- thank you iphone i had to, to do that <laughs> that's impressive uh so there you go uh the links will be available all over these at fast pages uh for the next four to six weeks uh if you can give a little, please, please do. It makes a huge, huge difference to uh, to November. Uh, and if you can't give a little, don't worry. We know that it's not possible. Um, but if you can hit that share button uh, on the links that will be in the comment section uh, of every single live podcast, every single podcast section, and will be periodically around the Is It Fast Facebook page and Instagram page, um, then you are doing huge amounts of work to uh, help those around you so thank you very very much talking of helping those around us we are right in the middle of quite a huge climate conversation so instead of that particular hot potato going on in glasgow at the moment uh, that i'm sure we're all behind uh, or not who knows tell us in the comments do you give a crap uh, we are <laughs> we're going to talk about electric cars because a week cannot go by without chatting about electric vehicles so this week the chinese are coming uh, this is the aura cat electric super mini it's the uh, chinese built electric hatchback due on sale in the uk from december priced from just 25 grand not bad uh it is <laughs> it is a car from well it's a sub brand actually or it's a sub brand of chinese manufacturer great wall motors who brought us the steed if you don't know what i'm talking about nobody else does either so don't worry about that um it's got a maximum range of 261 miles which is double that of say an mx30 
or slightly more than the Renault Zoe. Um, that maximum figure is achieved uh, by uh, featuring a 63 kilowatt battery pack. Uh, that model is probably going to cost £28,000, so its price creeps up. Um, but... It's going to be one of the cheapest. The interior is incredibly good value. Uh, we weren't invited to the press stuff because, hey, we never are. Don't know why. Uh, but mainly because I don't ask. Um, but what a cool little thing. Looks a little bit like a micro cross with a mini. But the Chinese are coming with their innovation, as always. And another EV comes to our shores. What do we reckon? I think going through the stats to start with, it does have a, a rapid charging uh, standard um, mm. to it. It can get to uh, an eighty percent charge in fifty minutes. So that's not too bad. Uh, Zero to thirty in three point eight seconds uh, on it, and it's going to be going out there and taking on guys like the um, the Peugeot E two hundred eight, the Vauxhall Corsa E, the Mini Electric, as well as the Zoe that you pointed out. Uh, I'm absolutely gutted that you knew that uh, GWM stood for a Great Wall Motor because I found that out and I thought, oh, I'm going to catch him out with this. But once again, I bow to the superior Stuart. Um, I've just been around the car game a long time and I actually quite liked the Great Walls Motor Steed, the GMW yeah. Steed, uh, GWM, Steed, whatever. Didn't sell very well, but I thought it looked it right. I thought it looked okay. So. And as you said, the interior, um, it's got this again, this kind of the, the two digital screens, um, heavy buttons in the steering, but it's considering it looks like a, a VW Beetle and a Chrysler Cruiser have had a passionate prom night uh, behind the, the garage. This isn't actually a bad car. Um, it's going to be looking to go up against the Mini and the Honda and the kind of the, the electric levels. Um, but they seem to kind of got the range almost there. It's going to be a car that most people could easily live with. Mm. I think it's going to be a bit of a winner yeah. for, for the market. I, if you're looking 28 grand for the old sing and dance and one brand new, that's that's pretty good. Yeah, I agree. I think it's I think it's great. You know, there's I've I've watched a couple of um, our colleagues and friends at uh, uh, other automotive establishments have a look around, have a poke about. Obviously, no one's really driven it yet. I don't think um, it was actually revealed uh, in the summer. I think at the Munich car show. Um, and it was, yeah, well, you know, I think I think it looks the part. Fair play, you know, ahead of the game to a degree. It's almost like the, the 1950s car interior for it as well. Just that yeah. screenshot there. It's quite nice. Yeah, yeah it's, it's like growing it. on me. Yeah. yeah, I agree. It's a bit Fiat 500. It kind of feels like they've borrowed the steering wheel from, I can't, it just looks like a car cobbled together from lots of different <laughs> car parts. But, I don't like, you know, yeah, mini, then the Chrysler, like you say, it's all a bit weird. But if, you know, 25 grand for a, a well-built electric car, fair enough. You know, this is this is the, the world we're living in. It's it's good. We need more choice. Um, choice is good. Choice and innovation drive prices down. So fair play. The brand new Aura Cat. I mean, look, look at the back. It looks so weird, but it looks <laughs> meow. But it does look good. Uh, tell us in the comments, what do you think of the Aura Cat? Do you have a problem or a possible issue with the build quality traditional out of chi traditionally out of Chinese manufacturers? Do you think it's gotten better, worse, or indifferent? Are you looking for an electric car at the moment? And if so, is this the electric car that you think you might go for? Uh, if you're interested in my opinion, I am not buying one. Uh, it's too small. It's a bit rubbish looking for me, and I'm still probably going to end up buying uh, some sort of other electric car, probably the Polestar 2. Not that I can afford one, but if I could, that would be what i go for, because I am a heathen. But there we have it. Tell us what you think of the Aura Cat. Interesting name there, if I say so myself. And I... <laughs> And I do. Walk around naked in Denmark and it's not illegal. Don't understand why we still have that. Um, so. <laughs> that cracks me up every time. Yeah, it's just the camera rolls and the mouth gets a, yeah. mouth gets a flapping. Um, so we are heading towards a weekend and weekends mean fun most of the time. 
And this weekend, after a bit of a break, we are heading back to the world of Formula E. Formula One for you and me. Uh, so, uh, Formula One heads to Mexico. It's the first time we've gone to Mexico since 2019 because of the worldwide issues with travel and a virus. Uh, the last winner was Mr. Lewis Hamilton, Sir Lewis Hamilton, I should say, uh, followed by Vettel. Crikey. And Bottas and Leclerc did quite well last time out. He was on pole. Uh, so, excited about this? Yeah, very much so. Five races to go, off to Brazil after this. The Mexico City Grand Prix, 71 laps as well off it. Mm -hmm. I love the big straight that they've got there. Lewis, like obviously, the big, big head-to-head. -head. We are really counting down the races here. Lewis Hamilton has won twice there, 2016, 2019. Max Verstappen has won twice there, 2017, 2018. Verstappen's got this 12-point um, lead on it. It's, it's going to go down to the wire. Um, interestingly, this week, uh, Rosberg uh, was believing that um, Hamilton can still win the title race um, over Verstappen. Now, it is worth pointing out that uh, Rosberg is our Mercedes ambassador, so he's probably <laughs> going to big up Lewis a little bit. But as Winston Zedmore once said, if there's a steady paycheck in it, I'll believe anything you'll say. <laughs> I think uh, you're probably right. He's probably he's probably got um that's a big Twinkie. Uh he's probably got he's probably got something to say because he's, as you say, a Mercedes ambassador. Uh I think it's anybody's at this point. Um what I didn't realise was that the late great Jim Clark has the record of, of only four though. Only I know, four, and, but yeah, yeah. yeah. Um in my opinion, the greatest F1 driver of all time if not the best driver, competitive motorsport racing driver of all Ooh. time, uh, just because he did it in everything. He'd race a Grand Prix, then he'd race a British Touring Championship, then he'd go off and race in Triumphs, then he'd go off and uh, drive in F3. The guy was an absolute weapon. Um, but anyway, uh, yes, yeah, so back to Mexico. It's the triple header. So it's Mexico, Brazil, and then I don't know oh, that's I'm bad isn't it yeah. yeah it'll be somewhere else um so there we have it it could be anyone's tell us in the comments we won't labor f1 mainly because every time we talk about them someone over there tries to sue me um but uh yeah yay uh who do you think is going to take home the victory at this year's f1 at mexico i think it's going to be Verstappen. Yep. You know what? I'm leading that way as well. I'm just not entirely sure with all the tweaks and changes that their mm -hmm. Mercedes engine is strong enough. I've, I do want Hamilton to win his eighth title, but fair play to Max. These two guys right now are just in a league of their own. With their oh, yeah. cars and their their aggressive driving stand, <laughs> standards yeah, as well. Yeah, they're really going for it. But it's good stuff. It's it's good for the viewer. So there we go. Tell us who you think is going to win the Mexico Grand Prix. Is it going to be Verstappen? Is it going to be Lewis Hamilton? Or is it going to be somebody else? There you go. Can't really go much wrong with that. Someone's going to win. <laughs> it could be you. We're sticking with motorsport. Because motorsport is life. Uh, we've got something very cool quite bespoke so brace yourselves uh this week it was announced that for all you budding btcc enthusiasts and fans they're building three new ford sierra rs 500 group a btcc cars so obviously the championship has changed over the years um it is going to they are going to be built to the exact spec used by andy rouse the great andy rouse oh. Uh, as he dominated the British Touring Car Championship in the 80s. He was a four-time champ, um, and he sanctioned construction of these three cars by Cotswold-based preparation firm at CNC Motorsport AWS, which is quite the mouthful, but fair play. They're making these things. Um, they're going to be made uh, from original Ford Sierra body shells, and they're going to carry Andy Rouse engineering build plates, just to kind of show that it, they are something very very special they're going to be built to the exact spec which means that they will be eligible to compete in historic racing events 
of which there are lots and lots that go out throughout the season. And if you're a, a sports fan uh, anywhere in the world, but if you're a, a motorsports fan in the UK, I would strongly recommend heading along to some of the historic racing because these cars might be worth hundreds of thousands of pounds. They might be heirlooms and antiques of the greatest variety, but you tell the drivers that. They absolutely spank these oh. things around racing tracks. Some of the some current drivers will do it as well, and it's incredible. Uh, but each car will use a freshly built version of the 575 brake horsepower Cosworth engine. Uh can be mated to a five-speed Getrax gearbox. Prices start at £185,000. And, of course, you can have options that bring the price up, and those options do include things like spares. <laughs> because you're going to need yeah. spares, uh, and custom liveries. But the RS500, one of these resto mods that aren't really a resto mod because they're actually just building it again. This is exciting, I think, because obviously I'm a massive touring car nerd, but this yeah. is exciting. Well, for me, best touring car ever. I mean, someone like Andy Rose has coming out and said it's the best racing car he's ever driven. Who are we to argue? Um, yeah. at, at their height... Um, there was 18 RS 500s on the grid. That is how popular, successful, reliable, whatever you want to say, these were. And it was a cost-effective car. You could have one built back then for about 80,000. Um, so, obviously, back in the late 80s, what is that equivalent now? Probably not too far off this 185,000. Probably, yeah. <laughs> um, is there going to be a road version? I imagine that's probably going to be a bit pricey too. Um, yeah, I don't know, man. It's an interesting one. They're cracking motors. They are iconic. Um, we've been lucky enough to to have uh, people associated with the RS Cosworth Sierra on the shows. I've been very privileged to speak to uh, Rob Gravit, who has been a champion, British touring car champion in one of these. Uh, and his son, worth following, follow Brad Gravit. He's been on the show quite a few times as well. Good lad. Um, Good so, yeah, these these cars, and that's more my era. Um, but very, very – it's just there are people out there with money that will buy these things. So, fair play. They're making them out of proper Sierra bits. Um, hopefully, it won't rust. And uh, <laughs> and that will be that. But 185 grand, they're making three of them. They're probably already sold. <laughs> I imagine they'll, they'll be gone. Yeah. They're gone, right? Um, but incredible, incredible that they are bringing back cars specifically for historic racing, and they're going to be homologated to that level as well, which is exciting. But tell us in the comments, what was your favorite British touring car? Is this the touring car that you think of in your mind's eye when you think of that championship? In your mind's eye. Particularly... Mind. It's just like that, just constantly beaming out RS500 cosy beams as it comes out, bolts of cosy bullets. Uh, but incredible. Oh, look car. at that spoiler at the back. That's just Mate, they're cool. savage. Yeah. There's just nothing like it. I think they're incredible. Um, I bet they're pigs, but, and they're tiny. This is the thing. When you see them in real life, they are tiny. And you just realize, just first of all, how big cars are compared to the 80s. Secondly, just how racing has changed. There's no bolster supports for your head you don't have you know it, it just basically you were being thrown around at 190 mile an hour whatever, like, just crazy and they stuff. didn't care that they just it. didn't care they didn't care brain damage was all part of the course uh not funny but was true uh so yeah. there we have it and on that note before we get cancelled tell us what you think of the rs500 cosy coming back to life thanks to very talented people presumably working out of a shed right here on Is It Fast, right here on Is It Fast. Talking of people out of sheds, uh, how do you keep up with the latest motorsport news, reviews, and what's coming up next? Well, the answer is very simple. You could just go and download this. Results Hub, all motorsport results, all in one place. And now there's an app. Take results with you on the go as we bring you the latest standings from championships around the world. And there's more. Use the app to see who is racing and where with our handy calendar feature. Download the app now. Results Hub. All motorsport results, all in one place. That's right. Results Hub. All motorsport results, all in one place via the internet website. Or you can download the app on your iOS device completely free of charge 
and you can keep up with what's been going on by creating a profile again completely for free and keeping up with your favorite delectation of motorsport smorgas boards but you know what with the kind of the racing season almost kind of drawing to an end you'd think that the results of the guy would start to go into hibernation just as we're waking up mariah carey in time for christmas they're <laughs> always working and tweaking this up it is they fantastic are. yeah they so it, it fair play board- to you just don't know what they're going to come up with next it's borderline borderline insanity but there it is they exist to help us with our lives and of course the f1 season grinding on quicker and 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 into the into the dark winter eves more than it probably should do so results hub still should have a place on your home browser this is the part of the show where we segue from motor vehicles and things that have got engines or something like that uh, to the world of watches because what time is it Stu? it's time to tick tock it is time to tick tock the man who never wears a watch Every single week, we scour the internet for the latest from the world of watches so that we can bring you interesting things that you might want to put on your wrist to tell the time, keep up with the weather, and sometimes just to look like you've got loads of bunts. And this week, we have got something that does most of those things. Sit back, enjoy, rev your engines, get ready for this. Sounds like it's uh, going to go straight into the, a Genesis song there. Uh, the, the... I want my TV. Yeah, that's the one. Die, Genesis, but... Die Straits. But yeah, that's exactly the one I was thinking of. Well done. Uh, so what have you just watched there? Well, this is the Gerard Perrigo Loretto Chronograph Aston Martin Edition. Uh, so the Loretto Chronograph Aston Martin Edition is the latest creation from Gerard Perrigo, made in collaboration with Aston Martin Lagonda. Uh, so its dial is suffused with a delightfully decadent, I didn't write this, application of what is known as Aston Martin Green, achieved by painstakingly applying paint 20 times to the dial. 20 times they applied paint to this dial, oh. forming seven distinct layers of paint as a result. The automotive influences also encompass cross-hatching to a diamond effect pattern first seen with the car maker's AM logo between 1921 and 1926. So it does have pedigree. And mm. you can basically see it across other models in the Aston Martin range over the years, which I'm sure we know. A pane of sapphire crystal positioned to the rear of the watch affords sight of the automatic manufacture movement. I'm not going to bother with the caliber because I don't know what it means and probably neither do you. Uh, marking the first time a Loretto chronograph features an open case back. And mm. it's pretty... Uh, well, it's out there. Um, cost, would you like to know? I, for once, did my homework. I know the cost, so Tell I'm it. quite happy for you to break everybody else's hearts. This is £18,000. Yeah, it is $18,100 ah. for the Gerard Perigo Loreto Chronograph Aston Martin Edition. Not going to be able to buy thousands of these, though, are we? Because there's only how many? 188 available. 188. First of all, if you're watching, tell us what you think of this Aston Martin chronograph from oh, Gerard Perigo. Okay. But why is there only 188? Do you know? Is it? I, I don't like actually. No, I, I, I thought it was a bit of a random number. Maybe yeah. they're just tying it into the price. Um, yeah. But no. Yeah, it is just such a random number. We've clearly just not done our enough homework on this. Um, well, yeah. I love how they're referring to it as Aston Martin Green. Is it not British Racing Green? Or are the French I it, to say that? Yeah. I think it might be a fine line. Um, yeah. It just looks like a royal... Is it a royal oak? The Audemars Adamor oh. P- PK? I can never say it properly. It's really bad. As a, I speak French like as well. Yeah. Um, 
it doesn't look massively original in my opinion um but it does look a little royal oak in its in its yeah. makeup um i like it i'm just not seeing where the 18 grand's coming from yeah i, I do really like the um the motif on the face is meant to kind of match into the quilted seats found in the um the cars uh, high performance sports cars i really really like the almost kind of the brushed metal finish um on the face of the rim of the watch the position of the dials and the date is perfect for me um and even the back here there's as we kind of freeze it's nice to see the kind of the white and see-through of the aston martin logo comparing to i could have went through the the american airlines one that we did a few weeks ago because it yeah. blocked everything off um, and <laughs> It's beautiful. If I had 18 grand to spend on a watch, I don't think it would be this. Um, I'm sorry, no. it just doesn't offer enough um, for me, but it's still pretty to look at. If you wear that to a dinner party, you're going to turn heads. People are going to be asking you about it, uh, even if it's not a brand that necessarily a lot of people have heard of. Yeah, I, I'm with you. So I'd heard of them, but I hadn't seen of them for a while. Mm. Um that's probably just my Facebook, sorry, meta marketing. Um, I think it's cool. No need, no need for the Aston Martin uh, side of it. I don't see the relevance. I think it's just, um, I just think it's, it's both companies being a little lazy and just lending each other the brand. And I, I, you know, I get it, but I don't think it does enough to appeal to an Aston Martin enthusiast or driver. I don't think it does enough for a watch enthusiast. Uh, personally that said very pretty watch if it was 10 grand cheaper you've got yourself a very good deal there um i kind of feel like it's it's stepping into the hublot world of why is it so expensive um Mm, and then i would turn around and buy and then i'd turn around and buy the hublot because i am that cretin um but it's one of these things so there we go uh the watch of the week this week on tiktok the girard oh god i'm gonna say that again i'm murdering that one the girard Perigu Loreto Chronograph Aston Martin Edition. Uh, $18,000. Yeah, go on. Can we just call it Gerard Butler in future? We the Gerard Butler. Hey, the, the Gerard Butler watch. Yeah, the Gerard it's Butler handsome, watch. handsome, it's green. That's fine. <laughs> Gerard Butler, would you wear him on your wrist? Q hate mail now, because your brain is spinning on that one, because I know mine is. Uh, but tell us... Yeah. As <laughs> yeah, we don't, move on. Don't, yeah. don't. Tell us what you think of that very expensive watch not for me but there we have it back to the world of cars uh this is uh well we've got electric well, we haven't actually gone electric mad this week sometimes we no. do but this time we haven't actually gone that crazy for it but um interesting uh news out of um what are they called the german company oh. Volkswagen. Uh, Volkswagen. That's a good point. Volkswagen. Do I have the video? Um, I do. Amazing. That's the first time in a long time I've done that. That's the joys of going out live, people. Um, well, I think yeah, we covered that well. Don't think everyone noticed. <laughs> Until I said I've messed up. Uh, so this week, uh, in fact, as we go out live uh, today, earlier today, Volkswagen announced the brand new in their electric lineup. Boy, are they going quickly adding to their lineup, the Volkswagen ID5. Uh, so a couple of iterations for the ID5. First of all, I think it looks smashing, but then I like the whole ID range, and I seem to be out there on my own a little bit. Uh, but the ID5 will be offered from around £47,000. Uh, here in the UK, standard will be rear wheel driven, uh, 132 or 201 brake horsepower motors. Uh, get it to six to from 60 to 62 miles an hour in either 10.4 seconds or 8.4. Bit sluggish, but I suppose it is a family hatchback. Uh, the 770 77 kilowatt battery, which comes as standard in the United Kingdom, offers a maximum range of 323 miles. Not bad. Slight boost over the straight backed ID4. Not bad. Uh, mm. Basically, they're putting that down to aerodynamics. The ID5 will also be offered with a performance-focused GTX, Castrol GTX, guys, uh, with an additional motor on the front axle. So you're basically getting four-wheel drive, bumps out 295 horsepower, cuts the 0 to 62 to 6.3 seconds. Uh, the additional power, of course, does, however, reduce the range. Uh, it goes down to 304 miles per charge. So really the big news is that Volkswagen are 
hammering through their electric lineup. They are adding car after car after car in what feels very short period of time. The ID5. Thoughts, hopes, dreams, fears, opinions, please. Yeah, obviously pretty closely related to the current ID4, uh, the SUV model that's out there. Um, I, I don't know. Um, it just, I, I kind of wanted a bit more of a, a coupe side of things, not just another fat jacked up hashback. Um, but it kind of seems to be what we've really got here. It's got a, quite the, the sloping roof on it. Um, it looks rather narrow as well. Um, so for someone like myself, who is rather tall, the reduced headroom isn't really going to kind of fall in for me. Uh, I've got to be honest, just a bit of a, another nail in the coffin of the saloon car um, for me. <laughs> yeah, I really like this. Yeah, I no, would. I, I get, I get because, why it can be liked. Um, yeah, I, I, but why I don't understand why I like this because I don't like the Cayenne Coupe. I don't like the McCann Coupe. I don't like the X4. I don't like any SUV that's been given a coupe feel, but I like this. And I'm a massive fan of the whole ID range. I wouldn't say I'm a Volkswagen fanboy either. Like I've had a GTI and, you know, I like all that. But I just really like it. Um, it does enough range. It does enough um, stuff. I mean, the interior, as you can see there, is pretty similar to the lot the whole id range fine not a problem with that at all i think it's really really snazzy i think the build quality is probably lacking on it if it's anything like the id4 and the id3 because yeah. that's where they're cutting costs volkswagen are cutting costs their quality is going down because they had to pay out for diesel gate and a host of other things that they were paying yeah. out for like as, the supports as, of the seat is there just look plastic yeah and, and that's not are. to say you can't be plastic but it yeah. just looks a bit cheaper plastic. Um, well, if I'm paying £47,000 for a motor, or not, as the case may be, because it doesn't yeah. have an internal combustion engine, um, I want the quality to be a bit better. I think these are rife for aftermarket upgrades, to be honest. This is where I feel mm -hmm. you know you can go in and, and, and do something more interesting with it. But the ID5 is uh, out and about. You can't order it. It's not for sale yet. and They haven't told us when it's going to be for sale. Uh, they, the pricing and stuff has obviously been given out a little bit, but overall, um, I think this is a good addition. I don't think it's a massive departure in terms of the feel. I think Volkswagen have done a really good job of redefining what a Volkswagen in this day and age, in the electronic vehicle age, looks like, because you can now see an ID product on the road and go, that's a Volkswagen. Well, yeah played because there's enough of the old mixed with enough of the new and i just think it's really really clever i think porsche and now you've done a very good job doing something similar as well and they of course are all and i love these by the way the play buttons pay and yeah, pause they, you, they are smart that's a nice little touch i'll give it that yeah yeah i love that um would i buy one yes would i have an id product over the aura cat that we saw earlier on yes i would i think my electric vehicle of choice nowadays would be an id3 that is where I would go for, if I wanted something slightly bigger, uh, I would probably still go for a more traditional SUV uh, or estate. Because remember, ladies and gentlemen, you can still buy estate cars, which are better handling, more loading room. You don't have to worry about the dog getting in the back and you can load stuff in easier, which is why I own an estate <laughs> because they're better. Do you remember when they, uh, they launched the ID4 GTA and they put it on this amazing kind of pattern and things mm -hmm. like that uh, on the bonnet? On the bonnet, it looked a little bit like a, a chubba chub lolly. Um, and on the side of the doors, it looked like a very angry tiki god. They, they kind of maybe needed to kind of do something a little bit more of this. Like, look at this kind of bright white steering wheel. It looks like something you get in a, in a kid's toy car. Yeah. Um, for some reason, that jumped out at me and I immediately thought, Oh, yeah. uh, and it starts to question the quality of the build inside that, that we obviously touched on. And what happens to the white interior after a while? You know, yeah. do, is, are the colors going to transfer from your jeans? <laughs> if they're cheap jeans and, <laughs> and it runs onto uh, onto the seat or, you know, the steering wheel, um, it's an interesting thing. I was speaking to my better half and she was saying about Alcantara steering wheels we would never buy a car with an Alcantara steering wheel. I was like, why not? Like, I quite like them. I've had them in the past. And she said, well, if you've touched your face and you get makeup on your on your fingers and then you touch your Alcantara steering wheel, it comes straight off. 
And I thought, well, that's quite interesting. And it made me look at interiors of cars in different ways because we all have our own things that we look out for in a car. Mine was always when I was a smoker, can I smoke in it? <laughs> uh, is there going to be a problem if I drop it? Is it going to set on fire? Uh, where do I put my phone? Where do I put my drink? Where do I put my whatever, whatever, you know, all these kind of things. Where do I put my sunglasses? How do I look cool? Turns out I don't look cool in anything, so it doesn't really matter. Aww. But there are all these things that you consider probably when you grow up a little bit where it's okay, well, this ID5 is probably going to have kids in it. Probably uh, might have pets in it. Um, it's going to have crap in it from the garden center. It's going to, you know, how is the change in the yeah. quality of the entire of the interior how is that going to impact family life and are you going to spend that money therefore because it's still volkswagen money but i just don't think you're getting volkswagen quality this is the problem it's almost like it's, they're marketing it to a younger adult who's probably not going to have just shy of 50 grand for this type of car well no one's buying a car out right now no that no that's true no there's a lot of We're, financing options available right now. yeah i can't remember i mean if uh, the only cars i buy outright are things that i am convinced are going to be appreciating classics <laughs> uh so far that consists of an old volvo and an old bmw um neither of which have gone up in value uh, oh actually the bmw might have done anyway the volkswagen id5 tell us what you think in the comments of the latest in Volkswagen's electric range. It's a tick from me, but is it a tick from you at home? Please let us know. And as we very quickly approach the end of our show, we are going to finish just on something a little bit bonkers, because why not? Uh, we did talk about this at the um, at the top of the show. Uh, New Zealand. Cool place, right? I imagine. Oh, ne never be been. A beautiful. Yeah. Right? Um, but famous for the hacker famous for rugby famous for a host of other things glaciers sheep um i don't know what else is new Ki kiwi game of thrones no not game of thrones the other one lord of the rings mm. uh but they do also make cars uh, and over the last few years there's been an interesting company uh, you may have heard of them you may have not have heard of them, a company called rodin they've been manufacturing uh, quite interesting racing cars uh, but We've had an update in the last little while uh, from Roden that they are making the F0. Now, the F0, which is what we see here, uh, the concept was released a couple of years ago, and obviously there's been things happen, particularly in New Zealand, where things have not been going on uh, uh, that much. Um, this is the F0. So just very quickly before we leave you, go onto the internet, Google Roden, Google the F0. This is a racing concept car that apparently will be out and about by Christmas in terms of a, a concept uh, or a test car, the Rodin F0 is a car, a racing car designed with really one ethos in mind. What if we made a racing car with no restrictions? They reckon this is going to be quicker than a Formula One car. They reckon it's going to have more aero. They reckon it's going to be an absolute juggernaut. We don't know an awful lot about it. We haven't seen anything in the flesh, but we just wanted to draw to your attention. Last thing on this show that they have said that by Christmas, we will know more about this. So go onto the interweb, go onto your Google or your Ask Jeeves and type in Rodin F0 because this is going to be spectacular when it eventually does hit racetracks. All you gentlemen racers out there, this is going to be one heck of a motor vehicle. So there yeah. you have it. If you're not a stickler for the old kind of health and safety, this is this is for you. Yeah. This I do really want to is... say it does look a little bit like a dustpan and brush set. But, yeah, it does from the top, doesn't it? Yeah. But <laughs> it is going to be quick. Yeah, There's just no the just the aero. Um, like you say, might be a health and safety nightmare. Um, a, a car, a race car made with no restrictions in mind is um, probably not the safest thing in the world. But racing isn't safe, so who cares? Uh, fair play to Roden, you crazy Kiwis. Thank you for bringing us what will be something exceptional. And the whole lineup to date has also been pretty uh, pretty exceptional as well so fair play but with that in mind we have come to the end of another live is it fast where we bring you our hand-picked favorite news from the world of motorsport autosport automotive everything in between and every now and again we talk about watches as well as always if you've gotten to this stage of the show thank you ever so much for listening watching before after 
or during the fact. Remember to follow us on your social media platform of choice to keep up with not just this, but a host of other goodies that we get up to on the regular, which include live motorsport action, highlights from motorsport action, interviews and segments from some of the most interesting personalities and car manufacturers and brands within the automotive and lifestyle space. And of course, we do this show live on a Wednesday at 7 p.m. where we talk considerable nonsense, but with information spattered in between. Thank you ever so much for watching, listening and being a part of it at home, or maybe you're on a train or a plane or some autobahn. Thank you, of course, to Stuart for keeping us on the straight and narrow. Thank you very much, Stuart. Thank you very much, Stuart. Always a pleasure, never a chore. And with that, we shall leave you until next week. Thank you very much.